we had nearly 300 generations of hunter-gatherer, Stone Age level peoples who occupied Montana before the arrival of Lewis and Clark. The year was 1951. Richard Forbus, a PhD student from Columbia University, sat in his canvas wall tent at the McAfee Archaeological Site a few miles south of Helena, Montana, puzzling over some of the oldest artifacts ever found in North America. The sweet smell of pipe tobacco, oil-treated canvas, and kerosene fumes must have filled his nostrils. The history is uh, is long. Actually, it's uh, it's as long as anything uh, that that we probably got in Montana as far as interest and research goes. It uh, had been collected by locals, arrowhead hunters, um, since at least the early 40s, probably the 30s, maybe going back farther than that. Uh, professional investigation didn't occur until 1951. The McAfee site is named after Edmund McAfee, then owner and editor of the Helena Independent newspaper and an avid artifact collector. Upon visiting the site, McAfee found a Scotts Bluff point from the ground surface, and with a little digging, found knives and chips. On a later visit, McAfee's wife, June, found a fluted Clovis point in the stream bed 50 meters down slope. Forbus came on the scene just five years after the end of World War II. A near hiatus from field research during the war led to a post-war surge of interest in archaeology, and Richard Forbus was riding that wave. The first professional archaeological investigations in 1951 occurred as a result of the, the River Basin surveys, uh, the federally sponsored um, groups that were uh, looking at the rivers that where dams were proposed to be built. At that time, they were going out ahead of dam construction, they were looking for archaeology, and they did a tremendous amount of, of quality work. Forbes found three distinct levels of occupation at McAfee. The oldest was a 10,000-year-old Folsom complex. Above that was a distinctly younger Scotts Bluff component, and the site was also used extensively by middle and late archaic hunters from 7,000 to about 2,000 years ago. The nature of lithic artifacts found at the lowest level of McAfee suggested the Forbes that the site was a campground for makers of Folsom fluted points utilizing stone from local quarries. At the end of the 1951 field season, in October of that year, the New York Times hailed the McAfee site as the first clearly stratified Paleo-Indian occupation with a Folsom component at the bottom and a younger Scotts Bluff occupation above. It was also recognized as the northernmost excavated site of its kind in North America and extended the range of Folsom and Scotts Bluff cultures nearly to the Continental Divide. Les Davis became good friends with Dick Forbus, and in 1989, he began a new investigation of McAfee, supported by Montana State University and the Cocopelli Archaeological Research Fund. His work confirmed the Folsom component and uncovered traces of Paleo-Indian deposits beneath the Folsom level. We found uh, the remnants of dozens of dinners, uh, bones that had been butchered and cooked for marrow or, or fat or grease or just stripped of, stripped of meat. Uh, uh, some that might have uh, tooth marks on them that might have been human or they might have been dog or, or whatever. Um, and we were able to identify the different kinds of animals that they ate. 
Faunal evidence uncovered by both Forbus and Davis at McAfee suggests that these early hunter-gatherers preyed on now extinct bison antiquus, as well as wolves, fox, cottontail, and jackrabbit. Unfortunately, at that time, the water table was right at the Folsom level, and deeper excavation was not possible. Another challenge to the McAfee legacy was the amount of vandalism that occurred in the decades after 1951. In this profile from a 1998 Les Davis excavation, you can see the outline of a vandal's pit that nearly reached the Paleo-Indian level. In the hot, hazy late summer of 2017, a group of archaeologists and local enthusiasts gathered to pay tribute to Les Davis and to make one last effort to get to the bottom of McAfee. In many ways, this gathering was a fitting tribute to Les's legacy as a humanist and educator. This particular group of people that have assembled, so some of us old archaeology buddies of Les's, Les's son, and then these people that the tradition of supporting avocational archaeologists is so strong here today, you know. So Patrick Rennie has really taken on that role of, that Les had done for decades and decades to really work with locals and ranchers and, and bring them in. And to, to be able to be a part of that, just to see him dig up rocks that are in alignment or dig up a, a tool and know that it's 10,000, 15,000 years old is absolutely incredible. I do feel it important that we who find these items have someone that we can share what we have found with those knowledgeable to help them try to figure out what has gone on in prehistory. Today, we're still finding cultural material below the level that, that Les had to stop at because of the water level at the time. Uh, the water table today has dropped substantially. We're not sure what the depth is, but currently we've not reached it in our excavations. We've gone down uh, another six inches from where Les last stopped and again was hindered by the water table filling the excavation trench. So. What, what our goal is, as much as anything, is to just help Les along. He loved this site. Uh, he, he really believed that this site would hold a great deal of informational value about uh, Paleo-Indians in Montana. And uh, our goal is to find out exactly how deep the cultural remains extend and, and what, what uh, cultural groups, that uh, archeologically defined cultural groups, that uh, we're actually here living at this site. And so to see all these people here, you know, ranchers and avocational historians and archeologists enjoying the work with the rest of us, and it's a good day, yeah.